Hey everybody, it is Aaron at Warmoth, and today is the big day. Three will enter, one will leave. It is solid versus chambered versus thin line. Stick around. So you have been requesting, and I have been teasing this video for a long time now, and today is the day. Uh, I have all the parts here. This is the thin line replacement body, obviously. Here is the solid replacement body. And here is the uh, chambered replacement body. Now, all three of these bodies were cut from the exact same piece of lumber. I don't know how you can do any better to erase that variable. Um, so here's a picture. You can see that these were all cut from the same piece of lumber. Uh, I still have a lot of assembly and setup work to do to get this test underway, but it's going to happen instantaneously for you. I'm just shooting this video ahead of time because I want a chance to uh, outline the parts that I'm using and I'm going to weigh the bodies. Uh, so first thing is, besides those three bodies, I've got this Warmoth Warhead neck that you've seen in a previous video about how to get the finish off of the frets. I've got this Godot Modern Tele Bridge, which I've also reviewed in a previous video. Uh, I'm going to be using a set of Lindy Fraylin Vintage Hot Telecaster pickups. Can't wait to give those a spin. I've got a whole box full of parts here. I got all the pick guards I need. It's time to weigh these things, put them together, and finally do this shootout. All right, now you're going to see as I'm weighing these that I've already drilled a bunch of the holes. Um, that's something I did, not something Warmoth did, just so we're clear about that. Um, and this is the thin line replacement body. That is going to clock in at 2.99 pounds, so basically three pounds. This is the, let's see, this is the chambered body. Three point six six pounds, and last but not least is the solid body. And that one clocks in at four point six two. So there you have the weights. Once again, these are all swamp ash cut from the exact same piece of lumber. Okay, so a couple of things before we begin the test. First, I'm going to make this a semi-blind test. You'll be able to tell the thin line, obviously, because it's got an F hole in it. Um, but I'm not going to reveal the solid and the chambered one until the end. Now, I know you could figure it out if you wanted to by looking at the wood grain and comparing it to the photo, but just don't. Let's have fun and make it a semi-blind test. Keep track of your answers, and I'll reveal at the end. Last thing, I'm going to be going into, the, my, into my deluxe reverb reissue micing it up with an SM57 and then going into the Focusrite. And then for the overdrive tones, I'm going to be using what? A bad monkey. All right, here we go.
for me. I have disassembled and reassembled this thing enough times now that I am approaching Forrest Gump level. And uh, I have had a chance to listen to the clips. I listened to them very closely and came away with a few observations. The first being that none of them really sound that different. I wouldn't pick one or the other uh, body type um, based on some kind of a tonal consideration. Uh, I think they sound close enough that you could dial in dial them in to sound almost exactly the same with a few twists of an amp knob or a pedal or something. Um, so yeah, they, they all sound very close to the same. Uh, however, I would say that the thin line had a little less volume than the other two. Uh, I, I noticed that. And um, I thought the solid um, had just more thump in the low end. You know, it just had a little more authority. And admittedly, it's really hard to separate the tactile experience of actually playing the guitar from how you perceive the tone. You know, it's when you're holding it against your body and you're feeling how it vibrates and how it responds to your playing, it's really hard to separate that from how you perceive the sound, which I think is the source of a lot of uh, tone debates uh, across the internet. Um, but yeah, those are my observations. And speaking of thin lines, I did come away with a very important build tip on thin lines. Uh, you know, on a typical T-style guitar, I always just put the neck pickup right into the pick guard, uh, run the wires through the channel, bring them out here, and, and solder them up to this separate control plate. But on a thin line, the pickup is mounted here. You have to run the wires through a channel and then solder them onto pots that are on the same pit guard. Um, so you end up kind of stuck in place. Uh, it, it's just something I had never thought about because I've never fully wired up a thin line before. So um, my tip is don't put the, the neck pickup into the pit guard until you've already run it through 
the channels and soldered it to the pots. Then you can put it through the pick guard. One, one way or the other, it's gonna be awkward, but at least if it's this side that's awkward, you don't have a hot soldering iron in your hand. So yeah, there's my important uh, thin line build tip. And now the big reveal. Guitar A was the chambered. Guitar B was the thin line, obviously. And that leaves guitar C as the solid body. So I want to know, did you get it right? Did it change your perceptions? And most importantly, did it change which one you would consider purchasing? Let me know in the comments. I'm really interested to find out. And that is my thin line versus chambered versus solid shootout. It was a ton of fun for me. I hope you found it useful. If you have any more questions about any of those body constructions or anything else related to Warmoth products, make sure and check out our website or give our customer service reps a call. And until next time, keep on picking.